What's good, man? Welcome back to the channel. I'm here with my Australian emu. We got Rico back here, but we got three in total, and I'm gonna be doing an emu care guide for y'all. So let's get into the video. So to start off, these big birds. As you let me uh get Rico to come by me, or I'll go over by her and show y'all how tall she actually is. But she stands up. Hey, girl. Good girl. Good girl. So I don't want to pull her all the way, but Rico's at my shoulder. An animal this tall, five feet tall, you know, that means they need adequate space. So this is a full one acre. It goes all the way up past those bushes, y'all know, and up the hill, and it keeps going. But the minimum emu need is a quarter acre. So if you can't provide a quarter acre, you probably shouldn't get emu because they're really big. They love to run and they need space. I see a lot of people online getting emu in small backyards, and it's just not right in my opinion. Um, these birds are massive. I don't even think an acre is enough now that I've seen them in here. Obviously, they can run, roam, forage, do all the stuff that emu do naturally. But I just want to put them on five or ten acres now. So I definitely feel like the quarter acre being the minimum is the bare minimum and an acre. That's what I recommend y'all get y'all birds on because you could just see them do so many things. They move so much throughout the day. And for them to be in such a small enclosure like you see most emu in nowadays, backyard emus, that's a whole Facebook group, backyard emus. And it's just really sad because there's not much for them to do. Uh, their brains aren't being stimulated and they're not being actual emu. They're being backyard emu. It's not a good thing. All right, so besides the enclosure size, we'll get back to what's in the enclosure. Uh, emu need companionship. And so you can be an emu's companion, definitely but they do way, way better together with other emu. A group of emu is called a mob. We currently have three emu in our mob, two males, one female. The males are Stanley and Schmidt, and then the female is Rico. Female emu do get more territorial and defensive and tend to fight males not as much unless they're protecting the nest because males sit on the nest, hatch the chicks, and raise the chicks. But like I was saying, Stanley, y'all can't see Stanley. Stanley and Rico are really good friends and emu need companionships from other emu. You could try and people try them with goats and cows and all this other foolishness. But at the end of the day, a emu needs to be with another emu. That's just how it is. And they're stressed out when they're not with other emu. And yeah, so companionship. Inside the enclosure, I do a full enclosure video, but they need a three-sided shelter they need a feeder because emu eat two to three pounds of food a day. So that's another thing, feeding. Can you feed these birds two to three pounds of food a day and do different research on what their food needs to be? But yeah, they need a three-sided shelter, even if they won't use it, because our emu have never used the shelter to get out of rain, uh, storm, or any of that. They just sit up, huddle up, keep each other warm, and do what they can do. Emu don't like being in shelters. That's another thing. So. You're going to spend your time, spend your money building a nice shelter like we did, and they're not even going to use it. But they do have to have something so that they have the choice if they want to, to go in there if it's too bad out here. Seven to eight foot fence. Look at how tall this fence is. So, as y'all can see, emu are huge, and you can imagine their legs are super strong. Just look at them. They're all legs, and so they can jump at least up here. So if they can get here, jump off of that and jump over, or even just clear a six-foot fence, they got to have eight-foot fencing, or they will get out. And ain't no catching the emu if you try. You need about three, four people. You got to jump on them. They strong, they fast, they heavy, and you got to hold them by their legs. So if your emu gets out and you're holding them by the legs and they kick, and swipe you down and, and real strong. Just ho trying to hold the emu that's escaped is not it. You don't want the emu to get out. So that seven to eight foot fencing is really gonna help in the long run. You might think, oh, he won't get out of four feet. Yeah, he might, he might not. And that might not gonna be a damn pain in the ass. Next up is the ability to forage. And I'll just show y'all what two out of three of the emu are doing right now. So here we go. This is Schmidt right here foraging through the hay. Rico, she just got out the shelter, but she just started foraging. And then Stanley over there, also foraging through the hay so field. really natural behavior of emu. They just sit around and peck and eat stuff all day in the wild, and they're opportunistic. So 
Yes, they eat fruits and veggies and their main diet is plant life, but they will also be seen eating a lizard or some meat sometimes if it's just out in the road, it's really cool. So yeah, man, we've also seen them uh, leaves of the trees, tops of bushes, they eat all that stuff. So they definitely need room and the ability to forage if they want to, because they will take advantage of it and you'll be surprised how much grass an emu will eat. And another thing for emus, it's impossible to find a vet for them. So you gotta be able to tell when your emu is looking funny, something's off about them and diagnose properly what's wrong with them. And once you give them the proper diagnosis, what are you gonna do to fix them? What are you gonna prescribe them? Pest Martin Tractor Supply does have everything you need along with the internet, but it's impossible to find a vet for these guys. Down here in Georgia, everybody has told me emu are too predictable and their claws are way too dangerous. Look how big them claws is. Way too dangerous to work with. So people have told me they don't work with emu and they're not coming to work with my emu. They won't even give them a checkup, none of that, because they're scared of them. They're unpredictable and they're dangerous. So you got to be able to prescribe your own medicine properly because if you don't they'll die um make sure you know what's wrong with them and yeah give them a proper diagnosis anytime they're sick injured all of that good stuff is pretty much you're on your own unless you got a really good vet because all the vets have told me you are too dangerous and they will not 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 work with them 24 7 access to water so emu don't just use water to drink they also use it to cool off so if it's a hundred some degrees outside emu don't sweat that's how humans cool off uh they'll get in water or go under shade but yeah they'll come in here usually cool off we'll hose them down and they'll just sit in here cool off really really cool um they also needed to drink though obviously clean water all the time as any animal common sense And I can say the last thing that goes into caring for the emu is just time, man. If you put the time in, you're going to get some rewards out of it that are crazy. You don't put the time in, you're going to get some bad rewards, which is a nasty animal that don't want nothing to do with you. And so we put the time in and look at Rico. She's super tame. She loves us. She loves being around us. She loves being rubbed. Yeah, man. So that's the last thing I say about caring for emu. You put the time in, these birds will love you, literally. Come up to you, make you feel good. Like, it's nothing like it, so. <laughs> you just put that time in, be patient with them. And it looks like a puppy dog, but a giant dinosaur. It's freaking cool, man. Another big component that I'll really talk about more in the enclosure video is shade. Emus need shade as well from the sun because yes, they live in the hot, hot desert, but they still have ways to get out of the sun in the desert. So you gotta replicate that here. They have this whole canopy line full of shade. And then we have shade cloth I showed y'all earlier as well. So different ways for them to regulate their temperature between the shelters, the shade cloth, the water, and the canopies over here under the trees. They got a lot of ways to get out of the sun, get out of, re uh, 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 get out of the sun, get out of rain, out of wind anything they need to protect themselves from even though they usually would just plop down and deal with it and yeah man i hope y'all enjoyed this quick video about emu care i'm gonna do a full video on the emu enclosure requirements because today we just talked about care so that included the feed the enclosure the companionship all that good stuff next we're going to talk about the actual enclosure, what comes along to building it, what really goes inside of the full, full, full nine yards. And so this is my full care guide on the Australian emus. If it's not good enough, let me know in the comments. I'll do another one. I'll go more in depth. But y'all know, I'm still learning this shit. So probably gonna have a hundred, hundred emu care guides. A hundred of them. It's gonna keep growing as I keep learning. So thank y'all. I'm rambling. I'm gonna get off the phone. Good night. Peace. What's good, man? Welcome back to the channel. So, I'm in the emu enclosure. Y'all see by the title, this is the emu care guide. So, full Australian emu guide.
Man, I got the whole gang back here. Everybody wants the book. I don't know why. Everybody wants my. Maybe it's this and these. Even this guy. Welcome back to the channel, man. This is gonna be my emu care guide. Australian emu, second largest bird in the world. How easy are they to care for? How easy are they to keep? And what goes into it? Let's get into it. This video real easy, bro. Yo, this is Schmidt, the crazy boy. I was telling y'all, look, he just walked off on me. He just walks off on me. He don't like the affection as much as Rico, who was just letting me rub her for 20 minutes straight. <laughs> Schmidt crazy, boy. 